and welcome to episode six of Sequin Girly Creates. Thank you so much if you're a returning visitor or a subscriber. I'm delighted with the fact that I assume people are subscribing to my channel. You wouldn't imagine the joy and the excitement when that happens. If you're new here, this is about sewing, but also other creative endeavours too. I've got shorts on some of the other things I create. There is other episodes prior to this one. There's also my Make Nine Plans and Update and my Me Made May as well. Thank you for coming along on my creative journey. I share my thoughts, my plans, my philosophy behind what I'm doing, and also a lot of fabric and a lot of great fun sewing. Welcome. I'd love it if you could subscribe and also like and please do leave comments and also if you want to see more live updates and still shots of my outfits go over to Instagram where I'm sequin girly. So in today's episode I'm going to share you with you what I've worn, some plans and some sewing that is presenting a challenge. I think it might be a slightly shorter episode today but I've got a bit of a challenge that I want to share with you because I don't want you to always think everything goes perfectly to plan because it doesn't. So let's share what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing a self-drafted jumper that's part of a co-ord set that I talked about in a previous episode. This fabric, I'll just get up close for you to can see, is like a textured stretch fabric. It's sort of flat blue on the back. I bought it in the Oxfam Superstore in Oxford. And at the time when I bought it, I had no idea what to do with it had a vision in the night. There is a short that you can watch about what happened from the vision to the reality. And I talk about it in one of my previous videos where I realized I wanted to create a co-ord. I made a pencil skirt to go with it and had a lot of agony over the sleeves on the jumper. But as you can see, I went for a long cuff and then the billowy. And I'm so happy that it has a bit of a retro look. Um, and I'm really pleased I went for that longer cuff. I also did my twin needle, oh look there's a thread there, twin needle which I'm delighted with here and here and I went for this sort of wider thing and I have a Paige Joanna Me Made label on the back. Earrings are from an Etsy seller, they're actually like plywood that's got colour on them and my necklaces are part of quite a big collection of colourful vintage necklaces. I find them in charity shops. Everywhere I go, I've got my eyes open for the one I haven't got. This is one style where they have the thicker at the bottom. I've got another bigger, chunkier style. Maybe I need to put a video sat a short together to share my many colours. I've even got family looking for them now. I'm nearly there with having one of every colour. I love to wear them together like this because I think that's okay. But when you put them together, it just creates a bit of interest as well. And I love the, the pop of colour they can bring and the balance of colour to an outfit. And so everywhere I'm going, going, what colour have I got left that I haven't got? And one day I walked past my local Oxfam and I went, there's a yellow one in the window! And they were closed. So the next morning I went to get this sort of really sort of pastely yellow one because it's the colour I was still looking for. So once you sort of get something you like, if you start looking, your eyes sort of tune to it. And that's part of how I do my charity shop shopping is to know the kind of things I'm looking for. So it helps you rather than just feeling a bit overwhelmed in the mass and also helps you to curate your look so you're not just buying lots of randoms that don't work together. And I know for me, these solid color necklaces work well. There was a period of time where I felt I was missing like a silver necklace. So that's what I set myself to look for when I was shopping. And by focusing on particular things, it just helps you to manage your wardrobe, but also focus your searching as you go around because otherwise I could endlessly just buy nice bits and fill my wardrobe. Let's start with some plans that I've got. So I have been thinking a lot about the Elodie wrap dress. I've looked at a couple of really good YouTube videos about this and the advice on it and I do like these big patch pockets but I'm liking this style maybe with the slightly shorter sleeve. I'd like to show you the fabric I've chosen. So I've got two pieces of this, this gorgeous, I think they're, they're chestnuts, I think, the, the leaves. They're horse chestnuts, yeah. Look at that, perfectly timed for this time of year. It's really drapey. It's, I would say, some kind of viscous, I think. 
I think this would look amazing as a wrap dress. So I think I will do a toil, possibly just of the top to get the hang of that because I know that one of the straps threads through a hole um, and I also need to think carefully about the neck so it's not gapy but it's a piece of clothing that then you could wear in the winter with a long sleeve top underneath and then in the spring summer without so that's on my list of things to make if you don't know the LED wrap dress is by Closet Core there's some great videos on YouTube if you search for it for inspiration there's actually three views and the version I've got goes from their sizing, which is a 0 to 20. They give it a difficulty of 2. And the hip goes from 33 inches to 48 inches. And the bust from 31 to 46 inches. I don't know if they do another size one, but that's the one I got. And I bought this from the fold line. The other plans that I have um, is I bought this... Back at the beginning of the year in a pattern sale, so it was half price. I just liked the shape of it. And when I got it, I realised that it was talking about sateen and having fabric with slight stretch. And I was like, hmm, I've done a lot of stretch sewing with jersey, but not cotton with a stretch. And I really like, although I like the ruffle on the front here, I think the flatter might be a better start. This is the perfect length for me and I like the structure of this sleeve. On Minerva, there's, if you look this pattern up, someone has written a review with this beautiful pink and white fabric they made it from. The one I've got goes from size 4 to 16, but I believe they do the next size one up. I will have to do an invisible zip at the back. I'm scared, but I've got to be brave. And this is the fabric I've got for this I think I saw someone recently on Instagram who'd made a pair of trousers in this fabric and it is a heavier weight cotton but I won't say it's like a cotton sateen because when I do this there's a nice bit of stretch I own some fantastic clothing by Lindy Bop who doesn't exist anymore and Collective who do new clothing but with vintage style and a lot of their lovely fabric does that so I'm excited to have a go myself I'm hoping I've bought plenty because I can't wait to make that up the other thing that I want to do is plan how to use this fabric I bought this in the sale from Fabric Godmother I won't say I got two meters but that look at that with these necklaces look at that look it's just almost too perfect so planning what to do with that I don't think I've washed this so actually all three of those fabrics need a wash before I can do the next thing hmm, I might ha have two and a half of this I, I just I can't wait to wear it so they're the three plans slash purchases I've got apart from a charity shop find uh, I've talked before about looking in the bedding section uh, particularly if there's bedding where there's like a little mark or something on it because you can place the patterns to avoid the mark and I went in my local church shop the other week and found this one the fact that it's got this frill already on the bottom can you imagine that on the bottom of a dress a summer dress I was like it's like a dream the fact that it's already made and already hemmed it is a flower print so I can just see this now as a summer dress with the frill at the bottom I think it could make a nice LED wrap dress with that frill as well so I really need to get on with sewing but it's been washed a lot of times which is nice but still got a nice bit of stiffness to it I think it's like a double sheet it's a flat sheet oh we've got a label here let's have a look never heard of it Canon full double matrimonial well that tells you the age of it doesn't it that it's a full double matrimonial and New York as well um, so we shall see but that will be a perfect that crisp cotton type summer dress and even with those over the top there so great find there my other half always panics when I go in the charity shop how can we resist when you find things like that um, so a sewing challenge you may have seen in a previous episode that I managed to get this amazing linen in the Oxfam Superstore. 
I'm just getting a piece of it to show you that looks like this love it I've made the skirt and I've actually done the side pockets with a bit of bias binding down them to create a bit of contrast and I've just got the placket left to do now I tried it on several times and it felt like it was a bit too big but in my brain I forgot that the waistband comes above the skirt so even if it fitted here the waistband tapers in a bit put it on and from about this point here it fits perfectly this just about covers across like this like not enough and I'm slightly breathing in I'm frustrated because I've got so far to the point where it's only the buttonholes and the buttons to put on but do you know what I won't wear it because I won't be comfortable I'll put it on and an hour later I can't be able to hold my tummy and my breath all that time and it will just sit in my wardrobe so I face the fact that I need to unpick the whole waistband unpick the seams where I've joined the waistband and and do slightly smaller seams and I have already there was one bit on the skirt where I unpicked a bit I'd gone a bit tighter so I'm going to unpick one of the joins between the front piece and the back piece and make it about half an inch bigger because if I don't it doesn't fit the body I have it fits the body I want to have it fits the waistline that I wish I still had, which is why I'm selling clothes, because I don't have it. And I know this. I put clothes on and they feel fine in the morning. By lunchtime when I've eaten something, they're tight and uncomfortable. And at this time of year when I'm wearing a pair of tights as well, however brilliant snag tights are, that's two layers on my tummy that then feel uncomfortable. If I'm going to sew clothes, I need to make them fit me in a comfortable way that makes my body feel comfortable. So I'm really frustrated because I still sometimes get that mindset of I want to finish, I want to finish, I want to finish, I want the thing, I want to wear it. But I need to slow down. I need to try and keep shifting myself away from that mindset because that way I will actually make this fit. It's really hard when you're fitting a skirt for the first time because without the buttons you can't get there and you pin it and then they pop and and but I know now I tried and it's just not right so I just have to keep doing it but I must make notes that's the thing I'm not very good at is I need to remember that and I think if I'd stuck to the original size which felt too big I'd have been okay but lesson learned. The good news is that the myosotis top that I've done to go with it is done apart from the buttons and I'm really happy with how this has turned out I have done the collar I think next myosotis I'm going to do it without the collar and make a facing because like everyone keeps saying I've got one collar that does a weird turnout why why is it doing that I don't know I think it's to do with the interfacing maybe I should make a collar without the interfacing but this was too wispy I have bias bound the inside of the armholes and this is ready for the buttons and I am really happy with that but I'm I must take my time so I thought I would share that with you because otherwise if I'm just sharing things like this and with Jersey it's stretchable it's flexible it's easy to make it work but I want clothes that are tailored and fitted so back I go to the drawing board with that I have got one other thing. Where is it? Here it is. A little bit of shopping. So if you've seen my Me Made May plans, you will have seen this lovely striped fabric from Becky Lane on Becky Lane Designs on Instagram uh, Etsy. But here it is. So I got this, this came, and it's like a peach skin fabric. Oh, I love that. But also I did grab while I was there, because you know what it's like, you don't just get the thing you want, you get something you see working on that as well but how could I not look at this so this is definitely a cotton I don't think it's a poplin but I can't be 100% sure but there look at that again that's a bit of me isn't it uh, I think that's what Joe Wick says sorry um, love it imagine the skirt out of that with this 
So there we go. That was Becky Lane Designs on Instagram. I'll pop her link in. When I get this skirt right, which I will put the pattern of, by the way, it's nothing wrong with the pattern. It was me. When I get it's a it's a simplicity pattern, I think. When I get this right, imagine it in this. This will be perfect. So that's another reason to work on getting that right. So as I said, a slightly shorter video this week, just because I want to update you where you are, and I can't always, I don't, I won't always be a sewing machine. That's a weird thing to say, but I won't, I won't always be sewing so fervently every week. But there is still lots of thinking and planning going on in the background. But it's still nice to show you and share with you, hopefully, where I'm at. Some of my videos are definitely more meaty around the actual sewing process and I'd love it if you could come back because episode 7 will be some talking about things I've sewn because by then I will have some other bits. Love it if you could subscribe. Come and see me on Instagram if you like at Sequin Girly. But thank you so much for joining. Also really enjoy your comments that people are sharing. But have a good week and thank you so much for being here with me. Bye!